making a dream come true. Making your dreams come true. Wow. Have you ever think about it? Have you really know what a dream is? Maybe not. But you have to do it. Dream is the connection with your soul, with your heart and your brain. Dream is what you really want to do in your life. Dream is your passion. Inside your dreams, you have your passion. Everyone has a passion. It's not so easy to have a passion or to look for your passion. But you have to try it. Try is a really important word in your life. Try. Try to make it happen. Try to look toward your dream. Try to look toward your passion. And when you find your passion, when you find your dream, try to make it real. It's going to be difficult. Yeah, really difficult. It's going to be hard. Really hard. Maybe you will make it. Maybe. But you've got to try it. I'm going to tell you what my passion is. My passion, my elderly. I love working with them. I love being with them. I give all my life to them. My passion is Nidia. My passion is William. My passion is Mary. My passion is Telo. All of them make sense in my life. All of them. The first time I step in a nursing home, I study medicine, occupational therapy. I'm specializing in cognitive stimulation, and I always wanted to work with my elderly. All the people tell me that, why? That's so sad. Why? But they're, they're going to die. What? And you're not going to die? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. The first, the first day of my life being a professional worker, they called me of a huge nursing home. It was a so incredible company, and they tell me, you know what? I've heard about you. I've heard you really like to walk to the elderly. And I say, yeah. Well, come with me. You're going to create all the world, all the elderly inside our nursing home. And I was so excited. Oh, my goodness. My first work, the first day I finished my career, I have my dream work. OK. My first day, I step in the nursing home. It was an incredible, amazing nursing home. It was so pretty. It was like a five-star hotel. I step inside, and I saw a huge living room like this one. Thousands of people sitting by, and I was so surprised, because all of them were singing. And they were singing a Spanish song for the kids called the Pajaritos. And they were pajaritos por aquí, pajaritos por allá. Well, they really weren't like that. They were pajaritos por aquí, pajaritos. And I was, what? And I went nearby my incredible Don Pedro, a so handsome gentleman, gentleman, 77 years old. And I asked Don Pedro, hello, what are you doing? You know what? I haven't got any idea. They think there were babies. Look, here we are, eight hours a day, sitting on a chair, singing. Well, I went to another place and talked to Maria. Maria was painting, but I realized she was painting a little duck and in a book that was written from zero to two. Oh, my goodness. Maria, what are you doing? I haven't got an idea, but this is ridiculous. I'm a physician woman. I've been all my life working, and now I'm painting a duck. And I went to another, way, another room where was nearby Jesus with another two engineers. And I went, well, hello, what are you doing? Look, look what are we doing. I've been 40 years of my life working as an engineer, and now I'm making sums. Two plus two, three plus three. I was, oh my goodness. I went to the manager and I told her, wait a minute, can I ask you something? I really don't understand anything. I'm here to create a 
incredible rehabilitation world for the elderly. And then you're telling me that all day long they're sitting on a chair, watching TV, playing bingo or singing pajaritos? And the manager told me, oh, well, it's not worth it. They're 80 years old. And I told her, and the 20 or 30 years of the life they have, they're going to be all day long sitting on a chair? Well, you know what? Do whatever I want. Do whatever you want to. I won't pay a penny more. No, no, it's not about money, I told her. It's about quality of life. You are going to be 70 years old. You need to have a life. I've been, I've, I've been all my life since, well, I'm young as you can see, but all my, all my childhood watching how elderly means sadness, while elderly means you can do anything else in your life. And I tried to change things inside the nursing home, but I couldn't. Because the second thing that really frustrated me also was my colleagues in the department didn't realize that they couldn't do anything for them. Occupational therapists, physiotherapists, doctors, nurses, they tell me, oh, well, they're 70, 80 years old, so what? And I was, oh, my goodness, I can't believe this. I think it's this company, I'm going, I'm going another way. I went to another huge company of nursing homes, and it happened to me exactly the same. So I have my own method. I thought, well, I have my method. In my patients, I really make a difference. In my patients, patients get really well. Why don't I put my method in all over our elderly here in Spain? The first thing I have to do is to call my method. And I thought, well, well, the Hoffman method seems to be a really nice name. And it was spectacular because all people nowadays think that I am an 80-year-old man scientific that created the Hoffman method. Or that is my grandfather that created the Hoffman method, and now I put it together in my daycare centers. So well, I there I was with my little blue car through Madrid, talk, talk, hospitals, talk, talk, nursing homes. Hello, I have my method. Oh, yeah, little girl, yeah. And I always say, well, little, little, let me see. <laughs> I could be lost something, but not little. Oh, well. I have a method, and it's incredible. I have plenty of things to do with it. No way. No way. Are you telling me you've created something that doesn't exist? I don't believe it. No, 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 no. All over the world. I went to, ha to the, my mom's house, and I said, Mom, do you know why? Do you know what? I'm going to do something different with the elderly. I'm going to reinvent the world of the elderly. I can't believe my elderly are all the time playing bingo. My mom was with the, her blue, cute blue eyes like mine. What are you talking about, Catherine? Are you telling me now? You've been so long studying, making all your effort. You're going to create something? Yeah, mom. Well, she told me, you're going to have lots of work to do. Yeah, mom. Maybe it's not going to make it. Maybe you're not going to make it. I know, mom but I'm going to try. She looked me to my eyes. I told me, go for it. You have to try. That was the moment I decided I want to create something different. That was the moment I decided I want to create a huge Dakin Center program with my method. And that is when Martina came into my life. Martina is, for me, a really, really special person. Martina was the first woman came into my daycare center. Martina has a really huge problem because her son died in a really tragic accident. And Martina's son, he, she has two sons, Martina's son, Antonio, came to me and told me, look, I've heard about your method. All the doctors in Spain I visit, they tell me that Martina is not going to make it. Because of the death of my brother, she, she is saying she wants to die. Martina decided to live their life. Martina decided to not talk anymore, to, to not eat anymore. Martina decided that her son has died, and he was his son, so she didn't want to do anything. So I decided, I tell Antonio, bring me Martina, I'm, and I'm going to work with her. I'm going to do my testing. I'm going to look forward what happens to her, really, because 
her brain was, has a system shut down. Her brain has something going wrong because of the death of the son. So I analyze Martina case. I do a, is, this is a test, it's called the clock test. This is Martina at the beginning. And I analyze which areas Martina has damaged. And with my Hoffman method, I came through the brain and I teach Martina's brain to get another way to transmit all the information. Our Martina, two years later, did that difference. This was the Martina's clock in 2007, and this, that was Martina's clock in 2009. It's not only the, the, the clock part, it's everything. Martina, working with me day a day, now I've been with Martina nine years of my life, she's been another person. Martina is now what Martina was. 20 years ago. Martina has a life. Martina lives alone, but she's smiling all the time. Antonio's dream was Martina getting better. Antonio's dream came true. Mar Martina's dream came true. She was so happy, so, so thankful, that she came to my wedding. She was the first lady at the church one hour before I arrived with all her family because she wanted to be with me because she, still, she told me, it's the happiest day of your life. You've made my happiest life of my life. And it was so exciting. You imagine crying all the time. But I realized that Martina has a life, thank, thankfully, that Martina is a 92-year-old person now that is happy, that it maybe is going to live eight years more, or who knows. I want you to know that, like Martina, there are thousands of elderly people needing help. Like Martina are your grandparents. Like Martina are your brothers and sisters. Like Martina are people that need to be listened, because how elderly are everything. They have given us so much. We have to take care. Caring and daring, for God's sake. Caring and daring. And that's the reason why, if you've got a dream, if you really want something in your life, if you really want to find your happiness, don't let anyone say it's a crazy thing. Don't let anyone say that it's impossible. Don't let anyone, because you have to try it. You have to try it. One person can change the world. One. You have to think about it. You have to really think about it. You know why? When I talk to entrepreneurs, I always say, you can be an entrepreneur with 15 years old, with 20, 30, 40, 5, 50, 60, 90 years old, why not? The thing is that you don't have to have in your life the, the incredible phrase that, what if, what if I've done that? What if? I think that is the most frustrated thing. You have to listen to yourself. Yourself, your own. Nobody, nobody believed in me but my mom. Everyone told me that I was crazy. Everyone told me that to create a daycare center was a crazy thing. Now I have 35 daycare centers in Spain. Now I'm dreaming going outside to US and to Latin America. Now I create another dream, making a foundation for my elderly that haven't got a penny to pay their treatments. That are my dreams day a day. Since I was 15 years old, I have my huge green books where I all the time write my dreams. It's my dreaming book. I want you to have your dreaming books. I want you to ask for a favor, a really huge favor. Tonight, when you're going home and you're going to sleep, before sleeping, think about what is your incredible dream. Think about what is your passion. Do it for me, only once, today. Think about me a little bit. And tomorrow, when you wake up, write that dream. Write that passion. And try to make it happen. Try it. 
you don't have to be frightened. You don't want to be frightened, of course. I've cried so much, a lot. I felt a lot, but I come up. You have to fight. Yeah, you have to fight, but you have to try it. Please, try it. Make your dream come true. Try to make your dream come true, because my dream came true. Like Martina's dream, like Antonio's dream, like Mary, Taylor, William, because they realize they have a life. I want you to have your life, your own life. And if you're not happy with your life, make it change. Make a change, make it happen, make it real. Thank you so much for hearing me. Thank you so much for, for being my dream, because today my dream came true another time. Thank you.